Today, we're going to renovate this old bus. Our friends over at Old Pal, which is our favorite cannabis company, asked us if we could renovate this old bus and turn it into a pop-up shop for a series of events in the Mojave Desert. Now, this bus is actually a composite made of multiple vehicle. I believe that the main base is from a 1948 Chevy bus, but the top half of a van was added on top along with a bunch of other really trippy modifications. They dropped it off at Maker Ranch and we only had three days days to clean it up and get it ready for the first event. And before I show you what we did, let's go over the different sections of the bus. The top half of a van was added on top to raise the ceiling height and let in light. A sleeping loft made out of steel and plywood was added on the back. We are charged with renovating the former living section into a pop-up shop and creating space for a photo booth in the back. We started just by cleaning out everything. Now, the old pal people wanted us to leave the kind of vintage charm on the interior, so we only removed kind of the moldy, mildewy pieces that were really falling apart. As we cleaned and removed things, we saw that there was these layers and layers of different renovations to the interior that had been done over time. And then all of that was topped off with a whole lot of neglect because I think this thing had been sitting unused for quite a while. This process went pretty smoothly but it was definitely going to be a big challenge matching new materials to this old vintage aesthetic. Now this bus belongs to Ryan Lovelace, the famous surfboard maker. Be sure to check out his work, he's fantastic. And he wanted us to preserve as much of the original design as possible. So even though some of these things look really shabby, we didn't want to just strip everything down to the frame and repaint everything. It was really about leaving as much of the original material as possible. Once everything was cleared out, I started working on the flooring in the front part of the bus. Now the majority of the bus had plywood floors that were in some places very water damaged. So I cut up a bunch of scrap pieces of hardwood and used that to kind of patch over the disintegrated parts of plywood. It was really hard for me to resist the urge just to rip out everything that was old and sand it all down and start fresh, but I really wanted to respect all the history and stories that were embodied in this bus. Our intervention with the bus is only going to last a few days, so it's not really my place to tell it, but I'll put some information about the Cosmic Collider in the description box below. Old Pal wanted to use this as sort of a pop-up store to sell some of their merch, and I really wanted to focus on making it inhabitable and safe. So in the back of the bus, there was these weird transitions between this interior metal lining and some of the structural elements. So Jesse and I tackled this and tried to patch it up as best we could. So we cut out some of the rusty screws, added in some new screws, added in some thick pieces of cedar that will allow us to screw this sheet metal to the structure, used an angle grinder to trim back some of the steel pieces that were jagged and sticking out, and then started patching up everything with flexible 1 8 inch thick plywood. We then found a nice canvas that matched the original lining, and Jesse cut it into these little squares so we could kind of do this cool patchwork pattern that covered up the brand new plywood and blended it into the original materials. Jesse used a combination of spray adhesive and fabric glue to really laminate these canvas panels on securely. We also used this technique to patch up a bunch of the random holes in the lining. We needed to create seating and display shelves for the merchandise. So we started boxing out the wheeled wells. Now in order to match the eclectic aesthetic, we really went through our entire scrap pile to use all different kinds of wood so that the new stuff would blend with the old. I had a bunch of cedar 2x6s left over from the container house and those sure came in handy. Right here I'm working on a combination bench and merchandise shelf. We used some radiata pine plywood to make floating shelves that we screwed to the walls. Simple finish was the perfect choice to create that vintage look with raw wood. It has a combination of boiled linseed oil and wax in it, and it really brought out the warmth and helped match everything together. Now this bus has a VW van added on top of it to sort of create this set of skylights that brings in a ton of light and underneath those are a series of rain gutters that are used to hold plants. But when I was installing LED lights in them, I noticed that they were kind of flopping around. So I decided to create some structural reinforcements out of some scrap steel. I used my angle grinder to cut one inch steel bar to length. I cut some notches so I could bend it to fit the profile of the inside of the bus. And then I welded on some supports to create these custom brackets that will fit right into the bus's interior profile. 
I then drilled some holes so I could put screws through and then reinforce these rain gutters. With the rain gutters reinforced, I now felt comfortable adding in a whole bunch of plants, which really transformed the whole atmosphere. Yeah, plants make everything better. Now, a lot of the interior mold and mildew came from this big hole where a stove pipe used to come out. So I used some roofing tape to tape down a piece of flashing to reduce the size of the hole just big enough so I could stick in a landscape solar powered light. I really layered on the roofing tape and then I sprayed over everything with Henry's Stop Leak Roofing Spray. On the inside, I cut a circle out of 8 inch thick plywood and then screwed that to the interior panels. Now I could drop in the solar powered LED light strip and then coil up those lights inside this old Moroccan lantern. Meanwhile, Mike from Modern Builds was working on the back bumper. We sort of wanted to build a little bit of a deck where you could kind of sit back here, smoke a joint, and take in all the cool scenes of the festivals. He drilled some holes through some of the steel beams so that he could screw on some pieces of cedar that would give us something to screw the decking down to. He cut some 2x6 cedar to length and then screwed it on, leaving quarter inch gaps for water to fall through. We had to cut notches to go around the support poles for the sleeping pod, but this was easy to do with a jigsaw. And if you're really into buses, Mike is actually in the process of converting a 40 foot long bus into a tiny home, so be sure to check out the Modern Builds channel on YouTube. Once all the deck boards were secured, Mike used a jigsaw to trim them to match the curves on the bumper. We needed to repair the threshold at the rear of the bus and Mike came up with a really good way of using popsicle sticks and a hot glue gun to create a template that we could use to mimic the curve of the inside of the bus. This is one of the first times that me, Mike, and Jesse all got to actually work on the same project physically, and it was a lot of fun and really reassuring to have extra heads around to solve problems. The time constraints in many ways turned out to be sort of a blessing because we really didn't have the time to second guess ourselves. We basically just went with the best ideas that came to us first, and then we're all very supportive and encouraging of each other. All right, so let's take a look inside. We added all new seat cushions for the banquette seating, lots of shelf space for the merchandise, some vintage posters, room for a record player, lots of plants, a new tuft and needle mattress up in the sleeping loft. Cute little space in the back with some seating that'll act as a photo booth with a vintage blanket that allows you to close it. And even though we easily could have spent another week or two on this project, we felt that we got the most important things done. The bus still had that classic sort of hippie vintage charm, but felt a lot fresher, safer, and was filled with lights and plants. So we finished just in time and turned the bus back over to the old pal people who took it for a test drive and a test party over at the Pioneer Town Hotel. Pioneer Town is a really fun area right next to Joshua Tree. Now we did have some engine trouble along the way, which is to be expected with a vehicle this age, but Gabe the mechanic got her up and running in no time at all. We set up shop in Pioneer Town, added some neon lights, and started to plot out the plan for the rest of the road trip. Thanks to Old Pal for including us on this awesome project. Be sure to check the link in the description to their website and Instagram page where you can learn more about them. They have this great California vintage aesthetic that totally reminds me of photos that my parents used to show me. We're looking forward to working with them on some cannabis related projects in the future. And keep your eyes open if you're in Southern California for the Cosmic Collider. It's always rolling around somewhere. Thanks for watching, check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks! Bye!